Hello everybody, I'm on my bike. Here's a stop sign. I'm gonna put you in my pocket. Camera. I'm gonna put my camera in my pocket here. I'm bike around town. I'm gonna talk about the theme of danger. Danger, danger. Danger Will Robinson. If the audio is coming through clear, if it's not, then this will be to have been to no one, but it is, as always, always useful to exercise the uh, dorsal stream of the brain, unless I have it confused with the ventral stream, whichever one it is that governs speech. That words be spoken and not just thought silently in one's head, but actually articulated with the tongue, the lips, and teeth in the hard palate. That thoughts reach such a manifestation point today. Bicycling through town on the topic of a danger. Now, let me check that video quality. Because I would like this to work. <sighs> Seems like it's still rolling. And I think now that I'm out of the traffic, I'll just kind of hold the camera in my hand for a little bit. Yeah, just to uh, manifest my own theme a little bit. Topic of danger. Many people would, or some people, I don't know if we did a survey. Survey says, what proportion of Americans consider bicycling on the phone while, uh, you know, being, no, hands, for instance. Whoa. How many people consider that dangerous? Bike on the phone, ladies and gentlemen. Use your little touchpad screens and look at the central monitor to see the results. Survey says, Aquamarine. Huh? <sighs> Turns out you posed the computer survey programming machine, sir, an imponderable, which has resulted in this hue and tint. Aquamarine. I wanted an answer, and yet I got Aquamarine. <laughs> so I'm out here biking. I flipped the camera around. But what's the, what's so after all that, and you see someone's honking at me, and someone thinks I'm being too dangerous. I think they're being dangerous by driving so fast on the road. See. One question you could say is, to what extent is danger, um... Not sub subjective, I guess. Not subjective, but for the purposes of a question, subjective. In other words, to what extent does perception play a role? danger itself you know because acts of God um, aside when it comes to man-made uh, disasters or man-made dangers or else even if they are acts of God ones that men like the force of gravity could avoid you know because a tightrope walker does not fear the tightrope and if they outlawed tightrope walking, because most people fell off of tightropes, where would that leave the poor tightrope walkers? Except above on their bouncy green tightropes. And hence, Aquamarine. So. I'm gonna go sit down now at the bicycle garden. This mosey on by. I don't know if it's called the bicycle garden, but there's a bicycle in it. 
and it seems like a kind of garden that you'd only ever visit on your bicycle because there's no parking except for bike parking so you'd have to park on the street and walk over but it's perfect for a bike see this is like bike paradise right now I've reached the promised land where my bike is safe all those lousy honking cars are far away well, I can sit down. It's me and my bike. <laughs> Things are safe. There's no danger anywhere. No, no danger inside. Oh no, there's a car. There's a car. Isn't that those dangerous? Not right now. Isn't that funny? One second, the car is looking dangerous. Next. It's not. Why? Because I'm no longer on the road. But what if you didn't know you were no longer on the road? Or what if your road, am I on the road telling abilities, had somehow been damaged in a bad car accident on the road? <laughs> well, or if I was a blind man, or a man who was blind and could hover, so I didn't know where I was sitting. If I was a man who was blind and could levitate through the power of his will, <laughs> just for the purposes of example, let us now hypothetically pose. Um, well, I might not feel very safe at all. I mean, look at these things cruising around. What if one of those smacks me? I'm blind, remember, in this example. Even though I can levitate, I'm still made out of flesh and bone. Oh man, that's dangerous out there. The only way to escape is to go way up there. AKA, what does up the heavens, etc., uh, represent? Hmm. The ethereal, the um, the unformed, like clouds, or the shifting, the nebulous, in other words, the forming and unforming, the ever-changeableness of everything, the Heraclitean flux. The Heraclitean flux. <laughs> the Harry Clit um, Teen Mom flux. Heraclitean, the Heraclitean flux of it all. Much like my hair, which is always in a state of flux.